right guys we are live we are live just started the stream looks like all the email alerts have just gone out excellent see how it goes here guys hey Karen how's it going thanks for coming in the stream today's stream should be pretty fun pretty fun stream got a lot of stuff planned a lot of visual aids that are going on here so uh, we should see what's going on with what we got here got a little notice about my resolution being unsupported but i don't care i'm lowering my uh stream so i can actually get in awesome yes you did you did say that you were going to be here it's very very cool um just making sure the stream looks okay here i'm checking my second monitor i have a tablet on the side which allows me to see what you guys are seeing at least there's a delay how's it going scs thanks for coming in sir to the stream so today's going to be all about comic books. I haven't did one about a comic stream yet, so I figured, why not? We've done uh, Funko stuff. We've done Star Wars. I figured, let's do comic books. I think that'd be a good topic to talk about right now. So we should see how it goes. I'm just letting it uh, start running for a little bit. I, if you notice that I decided to... I have heard of Saga. I have heard of Saga. I have never read Saga. I heard it was a good book. Um, I believe, uh, Van, uh, Vonnegut, I think, does that book. He did Ex Machina, uh, if I remember correctly. I heard it was a very, very good read. Very, very adult-oriented stuff. Um, but very, very cool. No problem. Take your time, Chief. Take your time. A drink on the stream today. I went back to Mountain Dew Lemon Ice today. So that's what's going to be today's drink. I'm kind of getting tired of this one. Um, it sort of tastes like a watered-down version of, like, a 7-Up. At least in my opinion. Uh, if you notice that we're going to be doing a uh, little bit talking about my, uh, first things first, uh, before I get ahead of myself, uh, we have four people in chat. Thank you guys for coming into the chat today. Uh, first thing, let you guys know, I'm sticking with OBS. Um, I did a trial run last week to see how using an encoder that's not using OBS. OBS is what you see right now. If you notice that you'll see my subscriber count on the screen, you'll see my little logo, you'll see my pop version of myself. That's all being done through OBS, which is a third-party free sort of program. It's, it's, it's vendor neutral where you can set everything up. You can put all these pieces in place. The problem is YouTube, when you use their version of streaming, you can't put all these bells and whistles in place. Uh, I can see a chat coming in, but if you wanted to read the chat on the vlog or on the VOD, on the video on demand, you do not see the actual chat being displayed. Um, I don't know if it's a setting that has to go in place or they don't have that functionality yet. I think it's pretty cool for some of the aspects of streaming. I just don't think it's there yet. It's only two months old, mind you. It's not up to par with OBS yet. It's getting there, but it's not there. Uh, just ask the stream, how is the sound? Is it coming across okay? Can you hear me all right? Please let me know, please let me know. Let me know in the chat, please. Please, please, please. Because I can't hear myself, so I, I'm assuming it's coming across okay. Like I said, I don't hear the sound. It would give me a feedback and it would really screw the stream up, so I don't usually do that. So uh, let me know, please. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you for coming in, as always. So let's start off at the top of the hour. We might have an overrun, meaning this might go past 10 o'clock. It all depends, really, how the stream goes. I'm very long in the tooth when it comes to talking comics. I get very passionate about it. First things first, as I mentioned about, oh, we're sticking with OBS. I don't know if you came in, Jackie, when I was mentioning it. I'm staying with OBS for right now. I had issues with the stream when I did it through YouTube. I'm not going to be using YouTube's streaming mechanism right now. I'm sticking with OBS, and hopefully I don't get a lot of errors in the upstream. I checked my speed. I'm about at 10 or 11 megabit right now on my upload. That will hold okay, I believe. So first things first, let's talk about, we're talking comics again, guys. I have to plug it. Because the actual giveaway is going to be ending in two days. It's this guy right here. It is comic. It is very th thematic. We're doing the uh, Mystery Pocket Pop keychain for Marvel. This entire box and all 24 bags, uh, 21 are still unopened. Three were open to use for demonstrations for the video I put out. They're going to be resealed, re-put back into this packaging. I put a link in the description box of this vlog. Uh, what is vlog? I keep calling it a vlog. vlog. It's a vlog. A vo it'll be a video on demand. So when you actually look at it after the fact in the description, you'll see a link to this giveaway. If you want in on it, there's still two days left to get uh, to get anything you want for the giveaway for this particular product. It was sponsored by Entertainment Earth. I will always plug them because they actually support my channel. 
It is open to U.S. residents only. Please, 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 guys, please. <laughs> when I say U.S. residents, I mean U.S. residents. I don't want to see people from the Ukraine or Sweden or Russia. Everybody enters the giveaway and then he shouldn't. It's only U.S. residents because it's extremely expensive to ship overseas. So with that being out of the way, with all the drama to <laughs> go away, uh, did you guys check out the video I put out last night, which was the Pop Ride vs. Pop Deluxes? I thought it was a pretty good video. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, definitely take a look at it after the stream. So, let's talk about my mascot for tonight. I have a mascot. that It's not my kitty cat. It's not Sapphire running around. We have a mascot. It is Dexstar, the Red Lantern Kitty. He's going to be sitting with me here. He might, he might show up on the stream. Just I'll pull him out. Just because I think it's cool. Um, this is a Red Lantern. This is a real character in DC Comics known as Dexstar. He is a Red Lantern. Uh, you can buy this. I think this is part of the DC Super Pets, which I believe Crypto has one as well. As well as there's a cat. Another, I think there's another cat version as well. But this, of course, is Dexstar the Red Lantern. So he's going to show up every once in a while. I might just pull him out so he can say hello. Just something corny and, and, and silly. So let's actually talk... Comic books is what I was getting at here. I, like I said at the beginning of the stream, I've done a lot of st things different on the stream so far. I've done adult-based things, conspiracy theory, theories, paranormal stuff. I've talked Star Wars. I've talked Star Trek. I have not yet talked comic books. So let's talk comic books. I have a big table of visual aids, so let's start there. Uh, first thing is first... Yes, I do. I know a lot about White Lantern and Batman. Uh, White Lantern and Batman was part of the rebirth... Uh, the... Uh, Brightest Day uh, storyline, actually. Uh, it had to do with part of Blackest Night, actually, which was a long run, ran through the entire DC Universe on Jeff Johns' legendary Blackest Night run, which really start, uh, started the whole White Lantern stuff. There was a ton of White Lanterns uh, that were brought back who, who, at that time, died. They were basically, this is a way for them to resurrect or bring back a character into continuity. That's what they actually did. Uh, at one time, Batman was quote-unquote dead. He was going through time. Uh, he got hit by uh, Dark Side's Omega Beams. And instead of being killed, he was pushed through time. So I, I didn't know about that story arc. I don't know how it actually transpired because I didn't read, and I don't read Batman. I read maybe a couple pieces around Batman. I used to read Nightwing. I used to read Robin. Uh, I don't read Batman currently. I read different stuff. And we'll talk about that in a second here. So... First thing, as I was mentioning, starting up here, um, is how many people have gone to comic book conventions? Uh, let me know in the chat, please, if you've ever been to a comic book show. Um, that could be a small convention. That could be a larger convention. It could be a San Diego Comic Con, New York Comic Con. It could be Supercon, Megacon. It could be Dragon Con. A lot of cons that are out there, some are, are smaller-based uh, conventions. But one thing you can do at a convention, and I, I have these here as an example here, because there are two of them that I, there are two of these that I have in my entire collection. I, I have probably close to I would say between two thousand and maybe three thousand comics. I, I think right now I could be off on the numbers, but I have at least six or seven stacked uh, three hundred count boxes. So I know those are. I think they have three. I, I believe they hold three hundred books, and the long ones I believe hold six hundred. I could be off on the numbers, but what you could do at comic conventions is they have a booth called the CGC. CGC is a place you can go to to get your comic books graded. Very similar to, let's say, baseball cards. That's cool, AA. I've never been to San Diego Comic Con. It is on my bucket list. It's something that I want to do. I have never yet done it. I want to eventually get out to San Diego because San Diego, I think it would be the coolest event to go to just because it's more of a... Uh, it's an attraction. It's like going to Disney World. It's something that is not your normal comic book convention, but I do want to go there. Thanks for piping in, eh? Uh, so, as I was getting to here, the CGC, you can get your comic books graded. Um, they really started with, uh, you know, uh, football cards, basketball cards, with trading, with, with, I guess you call them trading cards. Uh, those were what really started the comic book grading. That's what sort of led them into it. And if you go to the CGC booth, you can get your books graded. That's for people who are really into the comic book uh, collectability-wise, meaning it really ramps up the price of books. And I'll show you an example here. I have two of them that I'm going to be running here. Whoops. Get that right here. I have a whole table full of stuff. 
uh, two books that I have that are that are graded. Uh, first one, I actually sold this years ago, and I wanted to kick myself in the ass because I actually owned this book, never had it, had it graded. And when you have a book graded, they take painstaking effort to get stuff graded, um, meaning it goes through an entire process, and I'll kind of tell you what I know about the process. Uh, here's one as an example. This is a graded first appearance of Gambit. Uh, you might have known him from the uh, Wolverine movie. This is how Gambit's first appearance looked like, uh, issue number 266 of Uncanny X-Men. This is his first appearance. If you notice, it's in this clear plastic um, container where it actually, this book has been sandwiched in place. This is how much I actually bought the book for, for $95. I did buy that about a year and a half ago, I believe it was. This book is, is hermetically sealed. There's a seal right here you can see on the top. I don't know if you can really read it. It's very, very difficult to read the name. Uncanny X-Men 266. It's sort of a, they, they seal it in place with a sticker. Um, what they usually do with this is they have a person that goes through and grades these books. They tell you basically who the artist is, who, who the storyteller was. They put a number here. I guess you could scan it in their system to know what book this is. This is a legit book. It does have the CGC uh, little uh, silver logo right there. So you know it is a legit book. You can get this stuff done at the CGC. At most conventions, they'll have a booth in place to get this stuff done. And the reason why I bring it to your attention is because they, they take painstaking care in to preserve these titles. Books that are that are done on, let's say, newsprint, this is what the material that a comic is made on is newsprint, has a tendency of aging and getting a lot of acid in it. Back in the day, in the old days of Golden Age books and Silver Age books, people collected, or they didn't really collected, they read comics from their, from their books. Those were considered funny books back then. You know, they had their latest comic issue of Batman or Superman, they took it and rolled it up, put it in their back pocket. They didn't really care about the value. They weren't going to think, well, 30 years is going to be worth, you know, a quarter of a million dollars. They didn't think that way back in the day in the Golden Age and Silver Age time of comic books. They didn't do those sort of things. But they take a lot of care into preserving these titles here. Um, what they would basically do, from what I've heard, is that when they put this in place, they wear gloves when they do it. They put, they open the book up. They sort of butterfly it open. And they put like an acid special material on the first page and on the last page so any type of acid gets absorbed into those pages and not into the actual book. If you're looking for value, this is how you actually go into comics for the collectability standpoint of it. Very few books in the modern age now are worth anything. When I mean modern books, I would say late 90s uh, into 2000s and current. Very few books in this day and age are worth anything. And I'm talking lots of money. And I'll give you one good example of that. Pardon? And that would be The Walking Dead. Number one Walking Dead, last time I checked, was $1,000. Not graded. If it was graded, it'd probably triple or quadruple the price of that book for the first print. So that book, I know for a fact, is extremely expensive. All the low numbers of The Walking Dead, like the first, I think, 20 books, is extremely expensive because of A&E. And that's a book that was a more of a modern book, later in image, that became a cult classic now. It's a cult phenomenon. Another book that I have here, which is, I got it recently, I actually had it in my collection, and I didn't really knew the pricing of it. Um, it that Gambit one went for about 95 to 100 bucks. Uh, this one here is a variant issue, uh, when actual Batman gets a power ring. Uh, this is number nine of Green Lantern, uh, I think it was the fifth series, uh, I believe it was. Jeff Johns did this particular book. Uh, Batman had the power ring for, I think, two pages until he lost it. Um, so this is, you know, considered a 9.6. I think by itself, I believe this book was worth about $30 or $40, non-graded. I believe grade's about $125 for this title, if you're curious. But he did have a power ring for a decent amount of time. This is a uh, Ethan Van Cyber cover. Um, it's a very, very cool book. And I believe, yeah, he did the full book too, I believe. Yep, he did it as well. Yep, he did it. Uh, he did the cover, which was a variant. This was a variant cover. This is why it was so hard to get this book. I think you had to order, I want to say, 10 copies to get one of these. I think I originally bought it for, I think, 15, 20 bucks for this book. And I said, you know what? I was looking through uh, pricing of books, 
a few months ago, I'm like, wow, I think I have this book. And I dug through my, my back issues and I actually found it. I'm like, wow, this thing is worth a decent price. I think I need to get this graded. So the last convention I went to, which I believe was Magic City uh, Comic Con back in December, I brought that book in to get graded. The only problem is when you bring the books in to get graded, they take a cut of the actual book, the value of the book. They charge you a fee and a, and a, like a percentage of the actual book's worth to the actual price. I think this cost me about 60 I think it was $60 to get that graded. Uh, do you have any, does anyone in chat have anything graded? Let me know, please. We currently have three people in chat today. So hopefully some more people come back in. Hopefully more people come back into the chat. We only have three people, which is fine. I didn't think it'd be a huge um, turnout tonight. I know a lot of people are in the comics. I was hoping we had, let's we'd get like maybe four or five people in. Maybe uh, the, we'll get more people into the chat shortly. But we'll see where it goes. Um, like I said, those are the only two books I have graded. I have, like I said, about two, a little over 2,000 comics. I think but about 2,500 comics roughly right now. But uh, those are the only two books I have graded currently. I like to get some more stuff graded, but the problem is it's very, very expensive to get books graded. It's not cheap. Um, I believe it's much cheaper to get trading cards, basketball cards, football cards, baseball cards graded than a comic. I believe. I could be wrong, but I've never had a, 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 a sports card graded, so I don't know. Moving on. Moving on. Some more uh, stuff. If you're not aware, I am a big Green Lantern fan. Um, if you're new to my channel, uh, thanks for coming into the stream for the very first time. Uh, I have a massive Green Lantern fan. I actually started collecting Green Lantern books back in the 90s uh, during the first appearance of Kyle Rayner, which was Emerald Twilight, which is when I actually started reading the books. Um, that's when I actually got into comics. Uh, a buddy of mine was into Batman. I wanted to get something different. I didn't want to collect Batman. I went with Green Lantern instead. And I knew about the character from the old uh, Legion of um, Challenge of the Super Friends cartoon back in the 70s. I remember the Green Lantern character. And I did like it back then. Uh, but I collected Green Lantern books back in the 90s. And I got out of comics for like maybe five or six years. And I would say within the last three to four years, I actually got back in the comics again. So I'm going to show some, uh, some Green Lantern stuff here off to you guys. Uh, first thing is first, it's a limited to 3,000 pieces, uh, New York Comic Con 2013, 6-inch scale, Hal Jordan and Saint Walker. Uh, the character, the blue guy right here, is part of the Blue Lantern Corps. Uh, they have many Lantern Corps besides Green Lantern. Uh, that started with Jeff Johns' run during The Blackest Night. When he was transitioning into that storyline, he built these cores of different emotions. It's called the Emotional Spectrum. Think of it as a rainbow. Every color in that rainbow is a Legion core, or a core of uh, ring wearers of some type. Uh, so his is Hope, which is the blue one here. Uh, blue power rings actually supercharge Green Lanterns. So they make them much stronger. They're probably the weakest of the emotional spectrum people. They can make constructs, meaning they can make things out of energy, and they can heal. And they can fly and actually go into space. But that's about the extent of their quote-unquote power. Uh, they supercharge Green Lanterns, and that's Saint Walker. He has a different sort of looking character. Uh, this is a two-pack limited to two, limited to 3,000 pieces worldwide. It's in a six-inch scale. Uh, they started doing this a while back and i have two other i have this one and another one which was guy gardner and larfleys uh, those are out of packaging but this one i kept in packaging because it's, it's a comic-con exclusive limited to three thousand pieces worldwide uh next we'll take a look at a icon item this is hal jordan with his sort of spacesuit. you can make a full battle suit out of uh construct materials i have yet to open it the price point if you notice here was thirty dollars us uh, this is from the Icons Wave. Uh, the big. This is sort of DC collectible stuff, right there. It's uh, Dark Days. It's listed as Green Lantern Dark Days. Um, if you're curious, the back packaging looks like this. I haven't did a review of this guy. I'm probably not going to. I'm not going to take him out of packaging. I think it looks good on card. I'm not going to open him. Uh, I saw this one. I thought it'd be a really cool piece. If you are curious, it is very shiny. Looking at the uh, suit, especially the wings here, are very very shiny green. It looks sort of like neon green, but it's not that. It's not that uh, bright, I would say. It's more dull, and it's shiny, at least from what I'm seeing here. So the color green looks a little bit off to me. Next is probably going to be the review I'm going to be doing this Wednesday, most likely. It's a character I don't really like for Green Lantern. Um, they relaunched the Green Lantern book for Rebirth, which was coming out of their 52 series of for, for, for DC. I'm a big DC guy. Uh, I'm not a huge Marvel fan. I'll swing the Marvel in a second after I show this piece off here. This is Jessica Cruz, part of the new 
multiverse series that came out. Uh, this is the new packaging they're using now. They have changed the packaging up. Uh, she's limited to one per case. Uh, if you notice on the back here, there are five characters, uh, except for Two-Face here and uh, Jessica Cruz, which are one per case. Everybody else are two per case. So it leads me to believe there are eight items in the actual case. Two of this one, two of this one, and two of Martian Manhunter, and one of Jessica Cruz and Two-Face here. Uh, but I'm not a big fan of this character, and there's a lot to talk about and digest with this character, but I'm probably going to save that for the actual review itself. Um, I have not yet taken it out of the packaging. I've not yet played with the figure. If you're curious, this is what she would look like. Apology for the glare. I do see it glaring a little bit there. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff that's okay with this figure, but a lot of stuff that's bad. And, and we'll talk about that, you know, in the actual review itself. Uh, it does come with a piece to build the Clayface figure right here. So this is going to be probably Wednesday's review, most likely. Uh, another piece that came out, and again, in the, in the three and three quarter inch scale, which was a four pack. I uh, got this actually uh, for a Christmas gift, a Hanukkah gift uh, from Ross. Uh, if you go to the Ross store, they actually had this item. They have Black Hand, uh, Green Lantern, Sinestro, Arkillo, and of course, Dexstar, which is right here, which of course, the little red and black cat, which is this guy right here. That's Dexstar. So there's a little figure of him in the corner here. It's hard to pick up. I'll get him right there. He's right here, right there. He might not be coming in really good. Uh, the back of the packaging might have a better picture of him, which is right here. That's kind of what he would look like if you were curious. Uh, I'm probably not going to do the clay face because um, I'm not really invested in that wave. I mean, if I look at all the guys in that wave, uh, you got a, a new Superman, you got a Batwoman, you got Two Face, and you got Manhunter. Um, I think it's okay. I'm not really, like I said, invested in the actual Clayface itself. I, I I know of the figure. I know about the character's history, but at least from the Batman animated series. I know about his, his backstory there. But um, I'm probably not going to get the Clayface figure. But she's going to be reviewed probably this Wednesday, most likely, so stay tuned. So I rambled on about DC a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about Marvel. Because um, when you saw the thumbnail for this actual video, I had a lot of different comic companies that were listed in that little thumbnail. We had DC, Marvel, we had Image, and Valiant. We talked a little bit about Image, and we'll talk more now about Marvel. As far as stuff in the stream, we could talk comics, we could talk movies, we could talk collectibles, anything comic book related, which we will talk about. Now, Marvel. I have one item for Marvel. I'm actually not the biggest Marvel fan, um, mainly because one of the books I actually collected back in the day, in the late 90s, was it canceled, you know, it ran for, I think, five years? Five years it ran. I had 50 issues. It was canceled because of low sales. And he's probably a combination of Spider-Man and Iron Man. That's what this character is. And we're talking guy, you probably don't even know who he is. He's, I would, I, I would call him the Daniel Bryan of uh, comics. That's a, res, a wrestling reference to a guy that's a B-plus player. Uh, someone who wasn't that great. Cool. Uh, I think that's the one where she... Um, I believe that Gwenpool figure was the one she has a partially exposed face. And I think she's either blowing bubbles or has a piece of pizza. Something like that. Hey, hey, hey. I, I believe. I could be wrong. I, I, I believe that's what it is. I think I've seen that figure. I think that's also one that comes with a lot of hands, a lot of uh, pairs of hands, I believe. If, I, if I'm thinking of the same identical figure, I, I could be. I could be off. Um, however, the, uh, the I would call this guy a B-plus player uh, at best, a guy that nobody really liked. Um, his book got canceled, and it's I did a full review about him, and it's this guy right here. It's Dark Hawk. Um, people probably don't even know who he is. Yeah, sticking her tongue for a selfie. That, it was something like that, yeah. It is uh, Darkhawk here. He had a 50-issue run of comics. Uh, he only had two ever-created, uh, fully-released figures. One was in 3 and 3 quarter inch wave. This was the Guardians of the Galaxy wave. Uh, even now, the articulation is getting a little wonky. It feels very rubbery. Uh, feels like the quality is not really super great. Um, the wings, of course, you cannot articulate. They are stuck in this pose, unfortunately. 
but he is my underdog character. He's a character, in my opinion, uh, one of the few characters from Marvel I really like. Him and Gambit are my two favorite characters. Uh, hit me up in chat if you have a favorite character that I would not consider a main, a main attraction or main event character. Someone that is not your Wolverine or your Hulk or your Thor or your Iron Man. Do you guys have a character like that? Hit me up, please, in chat. Please, please, please. Please, please, please. If you guys have one. Again, mine is Darkhawk. Um, I've liked that character ever since the 90s. He's more of a... Like I said, he's sort of a an, an amalgam between Spider-Man and uh, Iron Man. Because he has sort of an Iron Man suit. Uh, it is alien tech. It's not tech that was created by Tony Stark. Nothing along those lines. But he's a dark, brooding character. Um, hey, yes, yes, thanks for coming back in the chat, sir. We're just talking Marvel right now. If you just joined me again, we're talking Marvel-based uh, comics right now. Do you have STS? Do you have a character that is not mainstream in Marvel? Do you have a guy that you like uh, that's maybe not known by a lot of people? I know a comic book store owner whose favorite character, I think, ever is Swamp Thing. That's what I'm getting at. Do you have a guy that would not be considered mainstream? I would even call, let's say, even uh, Constantine. Uh from DC, not mainstream. I mean, he's well known by a lot of people, but he's not Superman. He's not Batman. He's not Wonder Woman. Uh, that's of course the the Trinity. Do you have? Do you guys have a character that's not mainstream? Let me know in the chat, please. Because mine is this guy right here, which is my boy Darkhawk. He is my Daniel Bryan. He is my B plus player. Um, his book got canceled. And was brought back into a miniseries. He's now part of a new Marvel series that came out. It's a four-issue run. I have the first book. The new second issue comes out, I believe, next week. Or this. I thought it was this week. I couldn't find it. So I thought it would be coming out the 8th. I don't think it is. Uh, I think it's coming out next week is what I think it's coming out. It was a four-issue run. Um, but he's my favorite sort of underdog character. That character was uh, well-known, at least... Um, from a, from a point of view. I mean, a lot of people may not even know the name. Um, as I mentioned, he was actually uh, known for... Uh, he was actually part of the Avengers for a while. Part of the New Warriors. He's been a couple different teams. But uh, as a character not many people know about. Uh, even Mark Bagley, a well-known artist in Marvel, drew him for a while. Uh, drew... Uh, he actually came in and did some... like you know, When, when Darkhawk would, would sort of... Uh, show up in another person's book, you know, Bagley did some of the, his stuff as well. So well, kind of a well-established artist, Mark Bagley. He did uh, Carnage's first appearance, if you've never seen Carnage. Uh, it's the issue where Spider-Man's getting wrapped up by Carnage, the red and black symbiote suit. Not, so, not, not, so, zombie-outs. I think they call it something weird in the new Venom movie. They call it a very, very weird name. They don't call it a symbiote. A symbiote. I think they call it symbiote is what they call it. That's not how it's pronounced. It's pronounced symbiote. Um... Probably the only other Marvel thing I have here, which I have not yet done a review for, I got this again during the holidays, is a massive Marvel Legends. I uh, got this as a gift. For, uh, she got it for me at Ross, the store. This is a really big Marvel Legends Captain America. Again, not a big Captain America fan, but I have a stolen card. I have not yet opened it. I'm probably going to do a review sometime down the line. So I thought it would be really cool to show it to you guys. Just because I have not yet shown it to anybody. It's, uh, like I said, it's on mint on card right now. So what do you guys have for B-string players? Do you have anybody that you guys like? I told you mine, which was Darkhawk. Who do you guys like? Who do you guys like? Hit me up on chat, please. Hit me up on chat. Dexstar, like here, will want to know. He wants to know what's going on. He wants to know who your favorite uh, B-string uh, superheroes are. Hit me up in chat, please. Let me know, let me know, let me know, let me know. Do you have any, uh, if you guys don't have any uh, B-string or C-string characters, Gwenpool. That's funny because A, because she's sort of a newer character, at least from what I've seen for her. Um, I think she was a gag. I, I don't think she was really meant to be very popular, at least from what I've heard. Uh, she, I think they did it as a goof. I think on a cover of a particular book, and people really liked this rendition of the character Gwenpool. And I, from what I've heard, and I could be wrong, I think she's from our universe. She knows she's a comic book character, and she's in the Marvel universe. 
but she's not this. You know, she doesn't have. Any, I don't think she has any superpowers. I think she just has a suit that looks sort of like Deadpool's. I, I believe, but I, I could be really, really off there. I, I might be really, really off. I don't think I'm nowhere near the mark. But I think uh, she's a pretty cool character. Uh, I don't have a. I think I have. I have a pop of her, and that's all I have. I never picked up the six-inch figure yet. I've seen her. I've seen her at comic stores. Uh, was she sh was she a full case or was she part of a wave? I think she was part of the Deadpool wave, or part of she's part of a wave. I think. Let me know in chat, please. Let me know in chat. If you were curious, uh, one of my subscribers um, has a Kickstarter that's going out now. Uh, I've, I've actually he did the rookie goodness, the little pop version of me you see in the corner of the chat. Uh, he designed that for me. He has a kick. I'm gonna kind of plug him a little bit. He has a Kickstarter that's uh, going on right now, um, which is a wrestling-based Kickstarter. Let me see if I can actually find it for you guys here. Give me one second. Let me see if I can nail it down. It's a Kickstarter for the Fantastics. Um, give me a second here, too. <coughs> and I'll put it into the stream. But I know he's doing the full book, and I kind of want to plug him on this um, because he's. Uh, I thought it was a really cool idea. Uh, I know he's doing a Kickstarter for it. Hopefully, I can find the thing. I might not be able to locate it, unfortunately. I'm trying to find it right now. Give me one second, guys. I do want to put it into the actual chat if I can find it. Let's see if I can find this thing here. Hopefully I can find it. I may not be able to find it. There it is. I found it. I think today is the last day. Very cool. It's Bobby Fulton. Part of Fantastics. I'll put it here for you guys. If you're curious, that's the actual Kickstarter if you want to take a look at it. Um, it is the last day. Let me take a look, see if it's funded. He almost has it funded. No, uh, yeah, he almost has it funded. He has, the goal is 4000 He's at $3,090. If you're wrestling fans, if you're into the old school comics, uh, Javier Lugo is, actually has done the full book himself. Uh, really cool artwork. Uh, independent. I always like to back indie guys. I think indie guys are awesome. Um, definitely, if you're a wrestling fan, you might want to take a look at that. I will be putting this into the uh, description box of this vod, of this vod when it goes up, actually, uh, because I do think it'd be cool to uh, help, uh, you know, help the indie talents, uh, guys that are trying to make it that are not part of the big Marvel or DC or Image or Valiant. Now, speaking of Valiant. I haven't touched base on Valiant yet. Uh, you may not know what Valiant's all about. <clears throat> Valiant was a, or is now, a comic company. It was then. A company back in the late 90s, I would say, early 2000s, that basically gave uh, Marvel and DC a real run for their money. Um, it was a comic company that was not really known for their pretty, flashy art. It was not a book that was very pretty or very flashy. But their stories were Dead on the money. It was so good back in the day. Uh, you had a lot of those gimmick covers you would see that Marvel was rolling out, mainly because Valiant did it first. They did any type of, let's say, lithium covers or multicolored covers or hologram covers. Any of those weird covers you saw back in the late 90s, that happened because of Valiant. Any weird covers you may see, that was because Valiant started that whole trend back in the day. That was Valiant's bread and butter. That's what they did, and they did very, very well. What made Valiant really cool was their stories. Um, when you had Marvel and DC battling, you know, tooth and nail for, for, you know, jockeying for the number one comic book, you know, company in the world, you had smaller companies that were trying to, you know, ride upon their, their greatness. Image was coming up, you know, right then and there as well. But Valiant was, I would say, kind of edging, edge, you know, ed, uh, you know, kind of getting close to image back then and what made valiant very very cool again were the stories two per case okay full case for online retailers most brick and mortars get assortments though she was two per case i can see why she's the most popular i i can easily see why she's the most popular 
But as far as Valiant goes, um, what made Valiant so good was their stories. And a company that had the, the focus and the forethought to really plan out their continuity. And what I mean by that is they literally gave you a book when they originally kind of first started which was their continuity for like 20 years in the future. They told you right then and there, this event will happen at this year, this event will happen at this year, this event will happen this year, and characters will die, or something will happen with them during certain years of the book. And those events transpired. So when they said, you know, in 2004, uh, Toya Harada would be killed by Sting, a character named Sting, that actually happened in the comics, and a big event took place. What they they actually were they they had the forethought to think ahead and write all their continuity out and stuck to their guns. And one of the biggest things I give Valiant a ton of credit for was the terminology "dead is dead." When a character died in Valiant, they were gone, dead, deceased. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. They were not going to be resurrected or reborn or brought back into continuity. That character was gone. And that's one thing I really thought was a very different approach to storytelling when Valiant did comics. And that's one reason a lot of people like Valiant books. I had a few books I collected for Valiant. Um, I used to read Ninjak, which was kind of their take on Batman. I read uh, Torok the Dinosaur Hunter, which was, I believe, a gold key comic that eventually Valiant acquired the rights for. It was a Native American guy who hunted dinosaurs. Uh, that's what he did. That, that was his big take, you know, claim to fame. His name is, you know, Torok the Dinosaur Hunter. <laughs> Bart Sears was a really known, a popular artist back then, and he actually did uh, several of the books in his run. A lot of the characters they had were like Eternal Warrior, Archer and Armstrong, <coughs> Solar, Man of the Atom. A lot of uh, characters that came from, let's say, Gold Key, and they, I guess they acquired the rights of those characters and rolled them into Valiant. But that's what I think Valiant had a lot of... Um, a lot of good press, a lot of good steam behind them, as far as I'm concerned. That's what made Valiant really, really cool. I have heard of Squirrel Girl, uh, Rainbow. Absolutely, I have heard of them. I have heard of Squirrel Girl. Uh, I've heard of some really crazy rumors about Squirrel Girl, too, actually. Uh, again, not the biggest Marvel guy, but I've heard of that character. Uh, for example, I heard that she might have had a relationship with uh, Wolverine. That's been a, a long-standing rumor actually. Don't know if it's true or not. I heard that she's like extremely like, I don't know if she's extremely violent, but she's a character that you would think more be a, a sort of a gag character. But I heard a lot of people like the Squirrel Girl character. I don't know her name. I know that she, I, I think she can either summon squirrels or does something with squirrels. She has a squirrel tail. Uh, you know, it would look something like, you know, his tail here. It kind of be very, very bushy and fluffed up as far as Dexter. But I have heard of Squirrel Girl. I heard of that character before. Um, don't know much about her. Uh, the only thing I really knew about her was I actually had the character on a game that came out on Facebook. It was a Marvel game, which was extremely, one time, very, very popular. It was a Flash game on Facebook. It was a three-on-three -three battle game. And I know it was extremely popular. It made Marvel a crazy ton of money. I don't know why they actually uh, they sunsetted that actual game. I can't remember what the name of the game was, but it was uh, exclusive on Facebook. It was a really, really fun game, and they, they canceled it. It was really, really cool. I mean, they had, like, I think 60 to 70 characters. And, like, every, like, I want to say every couple weeks a new character will be, will be put in through different missions. You can actually get the character. Uh, you would have to, you know, grind to get that character. But I, I thought it was a very, very cool, you know, idea. I did have the Squirrel Girl character. Uh, she can make, I think she can just make squirrels rain from the sky. Uh, she was able to talk to squirrels. Uh, she would have like a, a nice little combo attack. But I do know that character actually. Uh, Rainbow, thanks for coming into the stream. Do you have a favorite Marvel, DC, Valiant, or Image character that you wouldn't be considered mainstream? Someone that is maybe not known. Let me know please. My favorite DC hero and villain. Uh, DC hero, rather obvious. It would be this guy right here, Mr. Green Lantern. Uh, I'm a massive Green Lantern fan. Uh, probably my next one would be possibly... You came in the stream a little bit late, so you can see would be Gambit, which would be his first appearance. Uh, this is a 8.5 graded CGC comic. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny because... 
I always reference Gambit in this issue as sort of a bag lady. That's what he looks like to me. Uh, the art was not that great. Uh, if you were curious and didn't know, Gambit was actually created by Chris Claremont and Jim Lee created Gambit. Uh, and of course, we have Batman with the power ring, with the Green Lantern power ring, which was, uh, he had this for, I think, two pages in this issue, and that was it. Uh, as far as uh, DC goes, it would be Green Lantern. Marvel would be Gambit, and uh, this guy right here, as far as hero goes, would be Darkhawk. That's why I'm asking if you have any uh, favorite uh, sort of underused characters. Uh, I've seen people that were fans of Sleepwalker, uh, which was another sort of character that was, came out roughly around that time period. Uh, maybe people, a lot of people, people may like Ghost Rider, uh, Lobo. I know he's getting a resurgence now with the new, they're doing a new thing for DC right now with I think four different teams are getting together with both good guys and bad guys that are teaming up in this big, huge, epic summer sort of blockbuster sort of thing. I don't know all the details about it yet, but I would say uh, from on the Marvel side, it would be Gambit and Darkhawk. On the DC side, it would be Green Lantern <coughs> and... Uh, Maybe, I would say maybe if I pick another one. I would say all the different Green Lanterns. There's ones I don't like. I don't like the Jessica Cruz Green Lantern, which is, of course, this one right here. Not a big fan of her. Not a big fan. I'm going to do a full review of that character, Rainbow, uh, this coming Wednesday, most likely. Definitely tune in for that video. Uh, I'm going through, give you my pros and cons. Full, full breakdown of that particular video, of that character. I would say, as far as heroes go, it would be something in Green Lantern. Villains. Villains would be tough, because I sort of like the, 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 the B-string villains. Um, there was a villain that was part with the Darkhawk character here named Portal. Uh, Portal was a character which was a Native American guy. Uh, he can make portals in the air. He can has trans dimension. He had Darkhawk armor. He had armor that looked like that armor for Darkhawk. It had the amulet, the centerpiece that you see here. The little red jewel, which was his sort of focus for power, right here, that right, uh, that guy right there, it was ripped out of the actual armor. So that's how he actually changed. He was able to change from a human persona into an android, uh, where his body was up in space. Uh, Portal had his uh, amulet ripped out, uh, and there's a lot of continuity, a lot of backstory to it. I liked that character. I thought it was very, very cool. They didn't do much with him. Uh, actually, and as far as other villains go, I do like Venom. I like older school Venom. Uh, not the newer Venom stuff that you saw now, not the anti-Venom stuff. I liked Venom when it was Venom back in, let's say, the 90s and early 2000s. I did collect a bit of Spider-Man at that time. I never had Venom's first... I actually had... I stand corrected. I have his first appearance, which was issue 298, and I think it was 299 of Amazing Spider-Man, which was the last page of that issue where you see a cell wall and you see a hand like coming down like this, and he's, he, he holds it like this, and you see the, the, the symbiote suit going over it. Uh, basically, that was the Eddie Brock character, and it's funny because to this day, I think the best person to play Eddie Brock, in my honest opinion, people could say, no, Rook, you're wrong, this, that, that doesn't make any sense. In my honest opinion, I think the best person to play Eddie Brock would have been Brock Lesnar. I think Brock Lesnar in a full black casted bodysuit. Right he had a full casted bodysuit. Um, which I think would look very, very cool. I think Brock Lesnar, if he had better acting chops would be able to nail the look of Venom. Because Venom is a very, very, very muscular, big dude. He is, Eddie Brock is massively big. He's not thin like Spider-Man. No problem, Rainbow. He's a big, big, burly, bulky guy. He looks like a professional wrestler. That's what Eddie Brock looks like. And I can see Brock Lesnar absolutely nailing that role as far as the look. I mean, heck, they could feed him lines if it came down to it and just do voiceover over the fact of him. I mean, they could. I mean, it would sound odd because everybody knows kind of what Brock Lesnar sounds like. But I think they could go down that road. I thought he would be the perfect representation physically on screen for Eddie Brock and Venom. The new Venom movie that comes out, I don't know about it, but we'll see what happens. 
that would be my Marvel villain. I do like I do like Venom. As far as DC goes, I definitely dig Sinestro. I, I thought he was a very very cool character. Uh, he is of course the foil to Hal Jordan. Um, he has he, he now leads currently the Yellow Lantern Corps, which is the Sinestro Corps, which is the Yellow Group, uh, which is of course. If you've never saw what the what the uh, Yellow Lanterns look like, Sinestro Corps looks like, uh, Arkillo here, which is this guy right here, this guy in the yellow suit, that is a Sinestro Corps outfit for Arkillo. Of course, right next to him is Sinestro himself in a Green Lantern costume, because uh, for a while, of course, he was a Green Lantern until the Guardians stripped him of the power ring, uh, if you're curious. Uh, he was a Green Lantern. Then he became a Green Lantern again when basically he got reinstated to be a part of the Green Lantern as far as I believe was part of the 52 issues. I actually read most of the 52. There were some books I didn't pick up at the before the 52 issues uh, coming out of Kyle Rayner's run. There was a lot of books I didn't collect back then. Although Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner is my Green Lantern. He is my favorite Green Lantern out of them all. He is When you say Green Lantern to me, Kyle Rayner is my Green Lantern. Um, a lot of people had the, the big debate between Hal Jordan and Kyle Rayner. Uh, if you were curious, there have been several Green Lanterns of Earth. You had, of course, the original one, which was Hal Jordan. Well, prior to him was actually Alan Scott, who was a Green Lantern, but not the type that we know now. Uh, he had a weakness to wood. That was his weakness. So you can beat him with a baseball bat or a hockey stick. So you had... <laughs> no problem. Uh, you had Hal Jordan, then you had uh, John Stewart, not the actor John Stewart, the black guy John Stewart. He was really known that mainly for the Justice League cartoons back in the 90s and the early 2000s with Justice League. Of course, Guy Gardner. Everybody knows Guy Gardner. Then you had Kyle Rayner. Now you have Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz. So those are the six Green Lanterns of Earth. Uh, most of the time I forget the character Simon Baz's name, only because, to me, I don't really care for either of those two characters. The new Green Lantern book that's out right now, I collect it only because, and read it, only because it's a Green Lantern book. Uh, there's two Green Lantern books that are running right now. Uh, Green, uh, Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps will be canceling after issue number 50. That will be phased out with a new book to be launched. Uh, Dan Jurgens, who uh, basically of, of Superman fame, is going to be doing, I think it's a four or six issue series of books or a few issues of books. Um, and then looks to be transitioning to Grant Morrison. He's going to be picking up the reins of Green Lantern, which should be very, very good. Uh, a lot of the books right now for Green Lantern aren't that good, especially the, the actual main Green Lantern title, which has Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz in it, is a very, very bad book. Quite honestly, it's a, it's a, it's a painful book to read. It really is. Um, I'm, about, I'm about five or six issues behind right now, but it's an extremely difficult book to, for me to read. I'm not a fan of it at all. What about you, Rainbow? What is your favorite hero or villain? Let me know in the chat, please. Let me know, let me know, let me know. We had about three or four people in chat today, which is fine. I didn't think it'd be a huge chat today. I just want to do some comic book stuff. So I, just, I figured it'd be cool. For the people coming in late, we got our co-host here, Mr. Dexter. He's coming in. He is a Red Lantern Corps member, if you didn't know. He is in his little red out lantern outfit, and if you didn't notice here, he does have a red power ring on his tail, <laughs> which I think is very, very cool. But he is a Red Lantern Corps member. So what are your guys' favorite characters? I gave you some of mine. Um, I gave you my character that I think should got a lot more praise, which is, of course, uh, Darkhawk. My favorite comic book-based movie. Um, it's certainly not Green Lantern, I'll tell you that now. That movie was deplorable i hated that movie it was a slap in the face of all green lantern fans it basically spat all over the continuity for dc hero is aquaman oh that's that's very very cool very very cool uh, aquaman has gotten a lot of a re, uh, basically a big resurgence uh, i would say of late um what did you think rainbow of the interpretation of him in the justice league movie did you like it let me know please let me know, let me know, let me know. Let me know. Let me refresh that page. I'm just refreshing my page here in my other browser. 
Seven. There we go. We got five people watching. Excellent. Yeah, my stuff didn't refresh, so I was looking at number counts that were a little off. I could have had a bunch of people on the stream. I just couldn't notice because my my was my side machine over here was locked up, unfortunately. But uh, what did you think, Rainbow, of Aquaman in the Justice League movie? Um, Momo, uh, Momo, I think his name was. Uh, he, of course, played the main character of Kyle Drago in Game of Thrones. Jason Momo, yeah. Um, I thought he did a good job. I, I, I did like him. Um, would you have preferred him to have the blonde hair? Or, did, or the hair color didn't matter to you? Were you more traditional with Aquaman? Uh, as far as AA, as far as my favorite comic book movie, um, I would say probably you're gonna. You might think it's kind of funny. I m would may. I might actually say Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok. I love that movie. I thought it was really, really good. In, in my opinion, I think it's one of the best movies they had. As far as comic book movies, as far as storytelling, the pace, the action, everything was really good in that movie. Um, Infinity Wars, I thought was okay. I thought it was okay. I loved Deadpool. The very first Deadpool movie, I loved it. Absolutely loved the first Deadpool movie. Deadpool 2, mm, not so much. But I did love the first Deadpool movie. I thought it was a great flick. Um, extremely violent, extremely fun. It was a date movie. It was a love movie. It was a, a movie you bring, out to bring a date to, you bring a girlfriend to. Was there sex and violence? There was. But it was an extremely cool movie. It was a really done sort of on a shoestring budget. And I like it, sort of underground, so to speak. Love that movie. Let's see, DC's Batman and Joker and Harley Quinn. Uh, was, that, was that the animated one, A.A.? I think they made an animated one with, with Harley. I thought they did. Marvel. Which Spider-Man? <clears throat> yep, I saw both of them. The first movie crushes the second movie, in my honest opinion. Um, I, I, You can see the difference in directors and difference in direction of what the story was, was, was looking to do. I, I liked the second one, don't get me wrong. But I think the first one, the original one, was so much better. Um, as far as telling a story, telling, you know, the action, the pacing, uh, everything about it was a cool movie. They crammed a lot in that two hour uh, time slot. I thought it was a very, very good movie. Absolutely. Definitely take a look at that film. If you've never seen Deadpool, take a look at it. But I think, hey, hey the, the, Dead, the DC Batman and Joker and Harley Quinn, I know they did one, an animated one with Harley Quinn in it. I know Batman and Harley Quinn were in it. I don't know which... If that's what you're talking about. I did recently see uh, Gotham by Gaslight. Great, great, great animated movie. Loved it. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Your favorite Marvel, though, is Spider-Woman. Really? Really? Now, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Rainbow, because, again, I don't read I don't read a lot of Marvel stuff. Um, I believe she has some type of thing now where she has a, a, a pheromone power. Where she can make people fall in love with her, or, or, or something like that. I think it works something uh, along those lines, where it's some type of uh, pheromone-driven power, um, at least from what I've heard. Now I could be wrong with that. I know that she had a big thing that she did with the uh, with the scroll invasion. There was something with the scrolls and Spider Woman. Favorite villain is Galactus. Galactus, I would say, is sort of misunderstood. Um, He's a villain that does villainous things, but he's doing them because he's hungry. <laughs> he's a force of nature, so to speak. He consumes planets because that's how he stays alive. Uh, you, you could call him a villain, but he, he does villainous things because he has to, to, to survive, basically. He's not going out and robbing a bank. He's, he's, not, he's not going to do something malicious just for sake of being malicious. That's cool, Mar uh, Rainbow. That's very, very cool. Um, I don't know. I, I flipped through the Secret War stuff. I thought that was kind of cool. I didn't read them all. I, I did flip through. I thought that was a very cool book for Marvel. And I know the biggest problem, I think the biggest issue with Marvel right now is they keep rebooting their stuff. I think they had like three reboots in like six years. Something silly like that. They keep reinventing their, their books. 
I know they reimagined New Iron Man. They did it with Thor. They did it with Spider Man with, with Miles Morales. Hey, I, I used to love X Men. Absolutely loved X Men. I, I think I stopped collecting X Men after the Onslaught storyline, the original Onslaught, which was the um, was one of the reasons I stopped collecting. Um, I, I thought it was an okay storyline. I, I love the old school X Men. I'm talking stuff during Chris Claremont's run back in the late nine, uh, I think late eighties, early nineties. I love that stuff. Jack O' Lantern. See, that's what I'm talking about. Jack O' Lantern, a character that um, a lot of people may not know about. I've heard of that character before, and that's what I do like. I like when people like old or like um, characters that what that would that I would call third tier or second tier villains uh people like scorpion people like hobgoblin people like i mean i wouldn't say people like stilt man but you know nobody likes stilt man but characters like like that like jack-o-lantern there are characters that are out there uh, that that are b-string or c-string even villains as well that people gravitate to a certain hero or villain for whatever reason um i'm trying to think of some characters for for marvel and dc that i like again i like the portal character the b-list guys absolutely i i love 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 b-list heroes and villains because they're not the top of the tier they're the guys that usually get forgotten or pushed aside because they're just not as popular for whatever reason but those characters still have a lot of personality perfect example would be the Flash's rogues, his rogue gallery. He, uh, Jeff Johns, took the B-rated villains and turned them into credible threats. Absolutely super credible threats. Uh, a perfect example would be Identity Crisis. It's a special series written by uh, Brad Meltzer, who is a well-known, well-established uh, writer. He actually wrote, I think it was a, I want to say it was an eight-issue series. I could be wrong. It was eight or nine issues, I believe, that took a character that was considered a B-string, I think maybe even C-string villain named, um, I think it was, uh, what was his name, Lightmaster, something along those lines. He was he had powers for light, and uh, he actually did some dastardly stuff, some very, very, very heinous stuff in that book. I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, Dr. Light, that's what his name was, Dr. Light. I remember his name. I actually read it. If you've never read Identity Crisis, definitely take a look at that book. Extremely good read. I've actually seen that figure, AA. I have seen the Jack and Leonard figure. Actually, I've seen him at Walgreens. But, I mean, that's, like I said, that's a character that I would say is a B or C string, you know, character. But Dr. Light, perfect example of a B string or C string uh, character. Absolutely. If you've never uh, taken a look at the Identity Crisis series, really good book. Absolutely a great read. If you've never read it, definitely take a look at it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's very, very crazy that you don't think the Justice League would do. You got the Jack Lantern figure for your birthday, Rainbow? That'd be very, very cool. I, I know he comes with a Collect and Connect piece. I've actually seen that figure before. Um... I've heard of him. I don't know much about the character, but I've actually seen that figure before. Uh, but definitely Identity Crisis, the book you should actually take a look at if you've never seen it before. Great, great, great read. Uh, another thing about, like I was saying, was The Flash and his rogues gallery. Jeff Johns took characters like Mirror Master, uh, 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 Captain Boomerang, uh, Heat Wave, uh, The Human Top, uh, The Trickster. Took characters that were... B and C string villains and made them credible threats. Captain Cold made them credible threats to Flash. And he basically elevated those characters to super heights. Spider Gwen, Wave, Build, Absorbing Man. Cool, cool, cool. But I mean, definitely, I do, I definitely like the C string B. The B string and C string heroes and villains. A perfect example would have also would have been for Marvel. Let's talk Marvel. Would be New Warriors. New Warriors was a teen book. Uh, very and Runaways. That's another big book now. Uh, that uh, New Warriors had a lot of cool characters. You had Night Thrasher, Namorita. You had Speedball. You had Darkhawk on it for a while. 
You had uh, Vance Astro, I believe his name was, who was, uh, I think, went on to be part of Guardians of the Galaxy, I, I believe. Um, but that was a very, very cool teen book. It was They were in their teens at the time, and it was a teen book. Completely different. Very cool book. I've only picked up a few issues, only because Darkhawk appeared in those books, and I was following everything for Darkhawk back in the day. Uh, people would usually follow their favorite characters. Um, that's what I normally did back in the day. I actually trailed my character. So if I knew the character was going to have a guest appearance in New Warriors, I'd pick those books up. If I knew the character was going to be guest appearancing in Spider-Man, uh, there was an issue, I think there was a six-issue series that Darkhawk was in, I think, in three or four books. But I, at that time, I collected Spider-Man. So it was cool seeing Darkhawk show up in those books. Um, I'm surprised no one liked Punisher. Um, another type of sort of tragic hero, uh, a guy that's sort of, you know, using weapons to, to take care of, of bad guys, mafia, those sort of things. A guy taking rules in his own hands, his own, uh, basically your, your typical vigilante. He is basically Batman, but using lethal tactics. Uh, not someone who is a millionaire, but definitely, uh, you know, I'm surprised no one mentioned it before. I have heard of Batrock. I have heard of Batrock, absolutely. He was a character that was in the uh, Captain America, I think, Winter Soldier movie, uh, played by GSP, George St. Pierre. I know who Batrock is. He is, a, I think, a second or third string villain in the Captain America books. Uh, yep, I have, I have heard of that character, absolutely. Uh, it's odd because I don't know a ton of Marvel stuff. I like the stuff they're doing now with all the new stuff for Infinity Wars as far as Marvel, their new Infinity War crossover they're doing right now. I haven't read the new Darkhawk book yet, but they're doing stuff now with the Infinity Gems. I know a lot of different characters have gems now. So I'm not entirely sure what they're doing. Um, there's been hints and rumors that they may be doing another Marvel DC crossover down the road. I know that uh, Nerds News on YouTube dropped some news today where there's like cutoff panels like bits and pieces of people's costumes that would show, if you look at the suit, you know, oh, this is Batman, or this is Wonder Woman, or this is Captain Marvel. They're doing stuff that they're, they're hinting, hinting that they're going to be doing some type of big crossover down the road. I believe it was the mid-2000s when you had the Amalgam print, where you had uh, Marvel and DC characters combined together. Uh, they did stuff with, uh, for example, Wolverine, uh, and uh, Batman was now called Dark Claw. They had a character that one. You had the Iron Lantern. It was Iron Man and Green Lantern merged together as an amalgam. I don't know if they're going to go down that road. I'm assuming not. I don't think they're probably going to go there. It'd be kind of funny if they did, just to you know touch reference to it, just out of mods to that sort of uh, property. But anything else you guys want to talk about comic? We're coming at an hour now. I'm surprised I actually talked for a full hour. I'm just, just rambling on. Uh, people just came into the chat near the end here. I, I do have a giveaway going on. I'll plug it one more time because it's going to be ending in two days. It is the Mystery Pocket Pop Keychain full case of 24 blind bag. Goes out to one winner. That's going to be done next week in next week's stream. Uh, sort of spoiler now, it's going to be a full Q&A stream as well as the drawing for that guy. I figure I'm going to do the drawing. I have to uh, set up my OBS to do it in a certain way so I do not give out information for the actual person who wins. So i got to set it up ahead of time to do the drawing. But after the drawing is done, I'll let the person know after the stream ends. And I will be doing a full Q&A, which will be Q&A round three which will be that one, will be my third Q&A. We'll do all sorts of questions, things like that. Any other last food for thoughts? You guys want to talk comics? I want to thank everybody who came into the stream for this hour. I had, you know, at most maybe five or six people in the stream at any one time. Again, I want to thank everybody who came into the stream. Any other comic stuff you want to talk about before I cut the stream off today? I am staying with OBS. I'm not going to be using the YouTube streaming software. A lot of people were complaining about it. What about Century? I have heard of the Century. Uh, Century, I believe, from what I've what I've been told and what I've heard was the was Marvel's equivalent to Superman. He was their Superman, at least from what I've what I've seen. Um, I don't. I think he was even a bad guy at one time. I know they did something with the, like the Dark Century. He had some type of weird shadow person or split personality or some type of doppelganger. Um, I have heard about that. Again, I'm not a huge Marvel fan, but I do pick up pieces here and there of continuity and stories. So uh, with that, 
going on, guys. I want to thank everyone who came into the stream today. And my boy Dexter here, I want to thank you as well, too. Uh, it was another great stream. Again, next week we'll be drawing the Mystery Pocket Pop here. If anyone who's in the stream and has not entered, definitely take a look at this thing if you are a U.S. resident. The link is in the VOD going up. I got the name correct this time. But definitely take a look at that. Again, big shout-outs to Javier Lugo. Uh, if you have not yet taken a look at his Kickstarter, I will drop it one more time here for you guys. It is the Bobby uh, Lay uh, Lawton. I think it was Bobby Layton. Bobby Layton, I believe it was. Or I could be messing up the name. It is, before I cut the stream here, the Bobby Fulton, excuse me, Bobby Fulton and the Fantastics. It's 80s wrestling personified. Um, if you want to support him, you're more than welcome to. The Kickstarter for that one ends in another day. Basically, the last day is today. So I wanted to give him a little plug to let him know about it, uh, just because um, I, I do support, like I said, indie talent. I've seen him before. If you notice the rookie goodness, the bottom pop of myself with the Green Lantern energy construct coming out is uh, done by Javier Lugo. He actually drew that for me. I commissioned him for that piece. So, again, big shout-outs to Javier Lugo. I want to thank everybody who came into my stream. Uh, Rainbow, I definitely will take a look at your channel shortly. AA, thank you very much for coming in. And we're going to be cutting the stream in three, uh, two, one. Thank you guys for coming in. See you next stream. Take care, and bye-bye.